नमस्कार हेलो फ्रेंड्स ग्रीटिंग्स एंड वेलकम टू दिस ट्यूटोरियल एट एंड टुडे टुडेज टॉपिक इज अ लिटिल डिफरेंट इन द सेंस दैट आई विल नॉट बी गोइंग इन टू हैंड्स ऑन अप्रोच बट आई विल टॉक ए लिटिल बिट अबाउट क्लियरिंग सम डाउट्स अबाउट द सिमेट्री पॉइंट एंड द बिलोंग्स ऑफ सैम्पलिंग सो in espresso when we plot the band structure in particular we uh, need these things and uh, for different materials say graphene or black phosphorus uh, you have a different kind of uh, symmetry points so just uh, i want to touch about the fundamentals of uh, these things a uh, lot of you might already know these things uh, since you are doing uh, computational material science but uh, still i think uh, it's a good point uh, to discuss about it uh, if possible to clear some confusions if there are any so let's begin so talking about um, crystallography and crystals we uh, live in the real world and uh, in the three dimensional space we have our coordinate system x y and z and there are the associated angles you can see alpha beta and gamma and um, the very important uh, point in studying any crystal or any material uh, crystalline material is the lattice so what is lattice it is like a blueprint for a crystal in the real space and it's a periodic pattern that is uh, repeated in all directions in this space so just like um, a builder has a blueprint for uh, making a house nature has uh, like put a blueprint for creating a crystal so where the atoms should be so these are basically uh, uh, geometric points uh, that are not really associated with a physical entity to begin with uh, but that is the design of the crystal so uh, a very simple example uh, to begin with let's talk about uh, 2d square lattice and 2d because uh, it is easier to understand um, uh, in a presentation so a 2d square lattice we will have uh, these are the uh, parameters a and b lattice parameters and these are equal and uh, the angle between them alpha is 90 degrees so this is the xy plane uh, we're showing you and uh, you can see there are these points these are the lattice points these are the geometric points that are repeated in space in 2d space in our case and uh, when some uh, basis is associated with these points we get what is called a crystal structure so in nature you have uh, 14 different uh, bravais lattices which i have uh, sh shown here with this illustration uh, this image is taken from this uh, open source and uh, these 14 uh, bravais lattices uh, are forming uh, you can say they are clubbed into different groups some are cubic depending upon the uh, lattice parameter uh, like if you have the sides a b and c are equal then you get a cubic system right and uh, uh, if they are somewhat different then you get another kind of a system you can get orthorhombic you can get tetragonal and various systems and depending also upon the angle between these uh, between these sides you get uh, rhombohedral hexagonal and this kind of stru structures uh, now uh, there are certain variations within a uh, you can say a group uh, because all these three are cubic but you see there is a one lat one with a lattice point uh, right at the at the body center so this is called a body centered cubic and designated by this letter i p is primitive there is no uh, atom inside the cell but only at the vertices so this is the primitive and you have uh, the so called face centered with f so lattice points at each of the faces so but no none on the none inside the body uh and there is another kind uh, base centered which we will uh, see 
in certain cases like this number 7 orthorhombic uh, so it is only on the two faces uh, not on all of the faces so it is sometimes also called side centered or end centered based on your uh, point of view and uh, so in total there are 14 different types you many of you already know this and uh, they are classified as such this cubic PIF so primitive cubic uh, body centered cubic face centered cubic tetragonal uh, you have this primitive tetragonal uh, tetragonal face center uh, tetragonal body center or face and face center are uh, sort of equivalent so you only talk about one which is more fundamental so we talk about the tetragonal uh, body center uh, so uh, this is right here and then you get uh, into the orthorhombic structures and there you have a special case that is the base center orthorhombic here body center face center and so on and this one is just uh, the showing uh, part of the hexagonal lattice uh, in total because this is uh, the primitive cell that is repeated um, uh, to form the hexagonal lattice so only that is being showed uh, in this uh, case and uh, we have all these structures, these blueprints as I said, to build a crystal uh, around and uh, such a crystal, what happens in such a crystal is uh, to, for the crystal to come into being, uh, all these lattice points, because these are just geometrical points, geometrical uh, blueprints in space and they are getting associated with a so called basis, basis is, uh, it can be an atom, a number of atoms, a molecule depending upon the type of uh, material you have and when each uh, lattice point is associated with a basis then what we get is a crystal structure so uh, this lattice plus basis is crystal structure that's what we get and but this uh, crystal structure is in real space right this lattice is also in real space uh, and now let us talk about something called the reciprocal space. You will deal with that a lot in material science. So what is the reciprocal space or the reciprocal lattice? Uh, basically, uh, you know these are in the real space and in a lattice there are planes. Uh, this uh, case is a 2D case. So you are just having lines but uh, if you think of the 3D uh, repetition, so there will be a number of planes like this. So there will be different set of planes, different family of planes. So these are uh, like for in this example, uh, th there are several possible planes uh, like this, like this and these or even these. Now if you look at all these uh, different kind of uh, planes, uh, each plane will have uh, each uh, family of planes rather. Um, because the lattice is periodic, so each family of planes would have a, a certain interlayer or interplanar spacing. Yeah. So uh, if we look at that and uh, now go for a sort of a construction that each family or each set of planes will be represented by a vector which is perpendicular to that set of planes. So say this uh, set of plane I have and I will make a vector perpendicular to all this and uh, the length of the vector should be reciprocal to the interplanar spacing. So the, if the planes are very closely spaced, I will have longer vector. If the set of planes are uh, widely spaced, I will have a shorter vector because it is reciprocal uh, to the interplanar spacing. And if we consider all these planes, all set of planes to be represented by a uh, vector, this kind of a vector um, as I have written down. So then we will get a, a number of such vectors for each set of planes and the tip of all those vectors would be quite unique because not only are they representing a direction perpendicular to the uh, set of planes but also the length of the vector is proportional to the reciprocal of the interplanar spacing. 
and uh, that ensures that the tip of those vectors would form another lattice in the so-called k space or the reciprocal space. So it is um, in mathematical terms you can think it's like a sort of a Fourier transformation of the lattice that is your reciprocal lattice. So from one lattice you get another lattice. Now what is the point of doing it? Um, what is the point of this construct? Uh, we will discuss that uh, later on in our material science lectures. I will also be launching a series on uh, material science. Uh, and there you will see that basically it is about um, X-ray diffraction or electron diffraction, uh, these kind of studies uh, that follow Bragg's law where this interplanar spacing is very important and uh, you get a different order of peaks for a set of plane. And that is a different number of peaks and uh, that's how the orientation of the crystal and all these things are identified and so it's important uh, at this moment just uh, let us know this that it is important uh, from such perspectives about the structural uh, uh, structural properties of the material so that's why uh, the reciprocal lattice space is quite important and um, the reciprocal lattice vectors a b and c are related to the real space vectors uh, small, uh, these are real vectors I have written in the small letters A, B and C and the reciprocal ones in capitals. So uh, this is the relation by getting the cross product and this A dot B cross C for A and um, some interesting observation about that is if you do some calculations, you take up a material science book and do some uh, calculations on pen and paper on your own, you will see reciprocal lattice of a cubic lattice is also a cubic lattice that is in the reciprocal space. For a BCC, the reciprocal lattice would become an FCC, body center cubic would become face centered and vice versa. And uh, the reciprocal lattice of a hexagonal lattice is also a hexagonal lattice. So this is an interesting thing. And now we will come to something called the Brillouin zone. So what is a Brillouin zone? From the real uh, space lattice, you now have the reciprocal lattice. So I have written down just this A and B in capital. So this is my reciprocal lattice, say for example. And this is also a 2D square one for simplicity. And in it we can construct something called a Wigner sides primitive cell. So what is a Wigner sides primitive cell and how to construct it? Because that primitive cell is basically your Brillouin zone. So how to construct this? Say take any point somewhere within the lattice. And this is not a limited uh, thing, you know, uh, because this uh, lattice as I defined uh, that it is filling up all the space. So uh, in this direction, this direction, this direction, there are plenty of points. So you have to use your imagination and um, you pick any one point, select one point, then connect it to all of its uh, first neighbors, all the neighboring ones which are close to it, all the neighbors, uh, not just uh, this at the edges or this at the middle points, but connect them all. And then you will draw perpendicular bisectors on each of these lines to draw the Wigner sides primitive cell. And what you will get is a region that will give you the Brillouin zone. So those perpendicular bisectors will also form a region and that zone, region or zone will be your Brillouin zone. So if you connect the first neighbors of that point, you will get the first Brillouin zone. And interesting thing about that is uh, as I already said, it is important for diffraction studies because the edges of the Brillouin zone will uh, reflect the electron waves traveling in a matter and uh, from these boundaries of the Brillouin zone. And if you keep on constructing uh, uh, for this uh, square lattice, for example, if you keep on constructing the first, you connect the first neighbors, you get the first zone uh, like this. Then you connect the next neighbors and again draw perpendicular bisectors on those lines you will get another zone okay uh, so like that if you continue doing you will end up with uh, first second third and many uh, more uh, uh, brillouin zones and um, why i'm showing this is that it has a unique property that all the brillouin zones have the same area so some of you might be interested in paper folding origami and this kind of things and you will see 
uh, that uh, if you just you can do a very nice example you can cut on a paper uh, cut a paper with a scissor and uh, draw this uh, lines and you can just fold these uh, edges onto this that is the third boolean zone you can fold these edges onto this one so that proves that uh, like the area of the third one is equal to the area of the second one and then once you fold uh, the these uh, second zone regions onto the first one you will see that the areas are same so that that's a uh, for it is valid for all the boolean zones areas even for higher orders if you go to higher orders area of all the boolean zones are same now let's talk about uh, why i am talking about this in our case because we will be encountering some 2d crystals uh, mainly i have been talking about 2d uh, crystals like graphene mos2 which are very uh, so called um, next generation materials very important materials right now uh, in material science these 2d materials layered materials and uh, say for example graphene it's a hexagonal 2d crystal so is mono layer of mos2 we have given the top views here and this red uh, one shows the primitive uh, cells and the primitive factors of the direct lattice is this i have used a different notation u1 u2 u3 like that uh, i have not gone into the third coordinate because it's uh, a 2d case so i don't have that coordinate uh, so and from that we will get these reciprocal lattice vectors v1 and v2 and which will also be a hexagonal and primitive factors of uh, direct lattice of phosphorin which is not hexagonal but this is a simple orthorhombic crystal and uh, here you have a different uh, sort of a lattice vector a and b are not equal and uh, then you will get a different kind of a reciprocal lattice vectors and this is also true for monolayer sns and uh, many other materials so as i talked uh, about that uh, you have 2d hexagonal graphene mos2 many other transition metal dichalcogenides some post transition metal uh, chalcogenides uh, and some for orthorhombic you will have black phosphorus phosphorin very uh, famous example transition metal uh, chalcogenides and some other materials also uh, they crystallize in, uh, crystallize in this kind of forms so now we are talking about the brillant zone so this is my uh, brillant zone of the graphene 2d graphene and there you have the symmetry points because uh, if you remember correctly that we will write down for brand structure the different symmetry points gamma m k gamma so what are these points uh, here you have them gamma is the center of the brillouin zone 0 0 0 uh, this is a 2d case but uh, while writing uh, in quantum espresso you uh, always have the third point uh, so 0 0 0 uh, 0 half 0 is m so this is this point 0 half 0 in the y and one third one third zero is the k and uh, these are the k points uh, so these uh, k and m points so this is your uh, sampling path gamma m k gamma or something like that and this is uh, an irre irreducible uh, region so this uh, you need to sample and uh, provided your uh, crystal is not under any non-uniform strain or anything uh, then uh, if it is in the ideal condition then this k and this k prime these are equivalent points so if you know the band structure around this path if you have sampled this region you will know for the entire hexagonal region if the system is uh, perfect if there are no imperfections or say for example if you uh, don't have a non-uniform strain or something like that so uh, that's important to understand uh, because in some cases you will be using super cells not unit cells and similarly for uh, 2d uh, simple orthorhombic like black phosphorus you will use these points gamma is 0 0 0 x is half 0 0 s is half half 0 and y is 0 half 0 and um, to write down this uh, sometimes in especially you will write down in fraction like 0 0.3333 and this uh, just 0.5 and here also this s and s prime will be equivalent if the situation is ideal and uh, sometimes you will see this point being referred to as m point 
but that is not for the orthorhombic that is uh, like a cubic uh, system because then uh, a and b are equal and then sometimes this s is referred to as m point so uh, i hope this um, gives you some uh, more idea more understanding about why we use the brillouin zone uh, and the how we refer to the points high symmetry points uh, for uh, determining the band structure and such and these are some of the books and uh, reference papers you might uh, go and study uh, for uh, understanding more about the crystal structure and i will be soon uh, launching uh, another uh, tutorial uh, series on material science basics of material science if you are interested you can follow that on the same channel and uh, also uh, i like to uh, thank you uh, for your uh, con continuous support and uh, do like share and subscribe to this channel and um, i'm in the process of uh, upgrading my system and uh, because of this uh, covid-19 situation it's getting delayed a bit but i will uh, come back with more hands on videos on this uh, quantum espresso tutorials so thank you and uh, take care stay safe see you soon again